Good morning. Uh, this is ridiculous. I really planned on like just telling my story of how I lost my memory between the ages of 14, 15, 16. Yay! I don't do full videos about like the traumas of my life apart from like losing my dad. Where do I start? Yesterday, I um, got an email from the university that I was trying to get into. So for you, for those of you who are new here, I'm 32 and I've decided to go back to school because I want to learn things that help me write a fantasy novel that uh, I've been wanting to write for a while. And I got an email basically saying that I didn't get in. Um, they couldn't give me a scholarship because I don't have a GED, but I can audit and the, the audit would like, it would be limited. So it's not like a, I won't be able to sit in on like everything. Never mind that it's like thousands and thousands of dollars that I don't have. Um, and it wasn't so much that I was disappointed about not getting into this particular school. It was more just the fact that I felt screwed over by my brain. So I'll give you guys some background. Ever since I've known myself, I was very, very depressed, very anxious, very sensitive, and had a lot of self-loathing. That was my childhood for a long time. And what eventually happened because of different circumstances in life, I developed phobias. Phobias from people, meaning like social phobias about being around people, and a phobia from blushing meaning like literally blushing on your face. Things just got really like bad in life because I was bullied very severely when I was in school. I had anxiety attacks and panic attacks and I started self-harming and uh, became suicidal. Well, I was suicidal like since I was a kid, but like I, I actually tried to commit suicide when I was 15 and it didn't work. Thank God, I'm still here. Basically what happened is that I could no longer function in society. And I started going out less and less. So less to congregation, uh, less to youth group, then less outside in general, less outside of my room to the point where I literally remember that it was just so bad, so bad and so difficult for me to be around people that I just didn't leave my room anymore. I literally remember the moment which I stood at the door with the lock and I was about to unlock it to go out. And I just remember thinking, I can't do this anymore. I just can't do this anymore. And so I didn't. And so what happened is that for half a year, gradually that was happening, happening, which for the majority of the time I was in my room. And then for basically a year solid, I was in my room. And you'd say like, what do you mean? Like your parents didn't see you, your siblings didn't see you, no. Um, my only sibling that I allowed to see me was my brother, my older brother, Shalem, and sometimes my younger siblings. Um, but I was so on edge that it was a sense, it was like a protective mechanism. Like if I don't do this, then I will, I will die. I will die. I will commit suicide. And so I think this was my way of protecting myself. I was extremely depressed, extremely paranoid, extremely anxious. I had extreme insomnia. I had nightmares every night, all night. I was, I was literally in the pit of hell. I was terrified all the time. I had extreme self-loathing. And every single moment, every single second felt like forever and a forever in hell. And I'm not even like going into how it actually feels day in, day out, being stuck in your room thinking I can't get out of here. But it was literally your worst nightmare come true and you're reliving it every day. So that's the background. What was happening in the meantime to my brain that was trying to protect itself is that the thought of being inside a room without being able to go outside forever, because I thought I will always be this way. I will never be able to heal. By the way, let me flip you around because I'll show you the outside of my room. So this is our house. Can't really see it's it's three three stories high and that's my room where my sister lives now but i was in that room for a year i could only reach my hands a certain amount out the window to feel the weather and that's it 
That's it, I was in here. During the time I was in my room, I started realizing that because it was too terrifying to think about the world outside, I went into fantasy world. So when I say fantasy world, it's literally thinking about like normal things, like a person walking a dog. And so during this time, my brain is shutting down towards everything and I'm realizing that I don't remember things anymore. I don't remember people or places or things or functions, like what certain things do. And I'm realizing that slowly, slowly, my memory is escaping me, is fading. And it literally felt like someone just sort of like took all the files of my of my brain. If you could think about like the brain as like a computer, just took all the files, took everything in it and just hit delete. And now everything is deleting, everything, everything in your brain, all of your memories, all the things that you have accumulated, the general knowledge of life, the stuff that you've learned at school, everything that you were before, it's being deleted. It's, it's, it's fading away. It's completely gone. So if you can think about like a person with Alzheimer's or the, or someone that's figuring out that they have Alzheimer's, that it's sort of fading away and they become terrified and afraid. That was my situation alone in a room. It was so severe that at some point I even forgot that I had a father or what a father even was. And I know that that's really hard for people to, to understand, but think of the fact that you are in a room, your mind is just fighting, 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 fighting. And then I remember my brother said one time like, oh, Abba is in, da, da, da. like he, my dad went abroad um, for something and then came back, but he, he mentioned him and I had forgotten one that I had a father, but prior even to that, that there even was such a thing. It was such an alien concept to me that I didn't understand it. I was like, right, I have a father. And don't get me wrong, like my, my parents tried to do everything that they could to get me out of that situation. But I was extremely, extremely suicidal. And so I think they were also very like, trying to walk very, very cautiously about how to go about it because I was very, I was so on edge. They were afraid that they would just find me dead in my room, like literally that. So they were trying their best. But by the time I was um, about to come out of my room because social services knew that I uh, was in a, I was a minor, I was in a bad situation. And they said, if you don't get her out of here, we will. Um, and so basically I had to allow someone to come into my room, like a psychologist, evaluate me. And then they were going to find a psychiatric ward for me. So before I got out of my room, I, I realized that I didn't remember how to write. And before that, I was writing poems like every day. I was writing a lot. And I realized that I don't remember how to write. And so it's like you're holding a pencil or a pen. And, and it's like and it's like being in first grade. You're like, you don't, you don't entirely know how to do it. And then I remembered the letters for the most part. Sometimes I got like confused, like I couldn't remember the letters. You know, you think after so many years, that you go through so many different types of therapy that like, I'd be much more healed than I am. But I think that I can't explain to you guys how, how terrifying it is. It is terrifying to realize that you don't, you don't remember. It's like someone just like in the middle of your life, just like hit delete and you are gone. It's not just like memories. Like people think like, oh, well, I don't remember much from, you know, my childhood or my teenage years. Like, I don't remember much, but you've still, you've still built, like you have a, your, your brain is like a building and you've built on all the information that you've accumulated, whether you remember most of it or not. For me, it's like someone just bulldozed everything. And so now how my brain sort of feels like it's like little huts, like little scattered huts, but none of them are connected. And the feeling of being 16 years old and realizing that you don't, you don't remember, but also that you can't retain new information easily. So it's not like you can like 
just make up for lost time and learn and study and go and you know like it wasn't there it's like I remember like sitting in my room and having to like to like try and write the the alphabet or try the the alphabet or try to write numbers and I would do them opposite and I mean it's amazing that I'm, that I'm even a writer because I don't know how I'm writing it doesn't make any sense to me so you come out of that situation and you start trying to live life and and it's extremely extremely difficult because I had emotional intelligence so think people think that you're intelligent and in a sense I was but I couldn't remember like anything I remember I remember sitting like standing in the um the kitchen of the psychiatric ward and there's a microwave there and you have all these buttons and all these numbers and all these things and I was so overwhelmed because I didn't I didn't know what to do I know it sounds really crazy but there's like these defining moments of like looking at the world around you and realizing that you don't you don't understand what things are anymore I know that it's supposed to warm up my food but I don't know how to make that happen and everything everything was overwhelming like and you have to force yourself you have to force yourself to live you have to force yourself to take the bus and you have to force yourself to try and understand money and by god let's not even talk about math or numbers because I couldn't do numbers at all like at all and I think it's like when you live this way for years because you're you're trying to function you you're you're very determined to try and live and you don't even know how you're going to get a job somehow I got a job shout out to Asher in trader that gave me my first job I think also how it affects you as an adult is that I have big dreams I have big dreams and I have been struggling with my brain and then the more stress you have the more trauma you have the more things you go through in life, it becomes harder and harder to deal with that mentally. And so your brain is just foggy all the time, all the time. And it is so difficult. And I'm going to therapy and I know I've done EMDR. What I'm doing now is that I'm trying to, first of all, have a physical schedule and routines and habits in life that help me. So going to sleep at a certain time and waking up at a certain time, eat at normal times, eat good food and that helps my brain fog um, and then there's the thoughts that happen throughout the day that are very like difficult so like when I reach a difficult point in not being able to understand something because my my brain can't can't get it then my my heart my soul my, my mentality is to be like uh, shut down you can't do it protect yourself and so it looks like I'm this like professional procrastinator or unprofessional because I can't I don't always reach my deadlines but I'm not I'm not an irresponsible person I'm just crippled <sighs> and I think it's the first time in years that I've actually like opened up about it to the point where it's just like this is a disability you can't see it but it's a disability because I was always trying to like hide the fact that I felt so stupid and you also think I'll never get a job this way no one's gonna give me a job because they're gonna be like well you're not reliable what I'm trying to say is that I'm determined to figure out what to do and to be honest I'm terrified of God asking me to try and get a GED because I remember at my first job shout out to revive israel knew that i was struggling with certain things and they're like well let's let's help you out like we'll give you uh like a math teacher and like they were super gracious about like equipping you for things and equipping you for your job and even things that didn't even benefit them and and so i tried to do math classes and uh, like i never i've never been particularly good at math but i mean I really don't think that I would pass it. I think I would be so frustrated because I stopped eventually because it was just, it was so hard and I don't think that I was getting it. And so for me to try and get a GED right now in life to get into a school, it's like, it's probably not gonna happen. And I, I honestly, I don't know where to go from here. 
I don't know if to just continue to knock on other doors and maybe they're like, hey, we're willing for you to to come without a GD and you know, whatever, but it's not likely. And so I'm at the point right now where I'm like, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. And I probably just need to start with how can I heal my brain? Generally speaking, it's really, really hard to go through life or at least half of it feeling like you are stupid, like you're not like everyone else. You're very, very misunderstood. People get very frustrated with you about things because you forget. It's not like short term memory, but it's more just a, a, a general brain fog that is very, very strong and all the time. Um, people get angry that you don't remember them or that you don't remember their name or yeah, people can get hurt and offended by things. Anyways, this, this vlog is probably way too long and if you've made it this far, then congrats. But that's basically the story of how I lost my memory. And I'm still struggling with it. I don't cry like this every day. It's like something that you just sort of deal with. It's like, this is my brain and I've learned how to function with it the best that I absolutely can. Um, but I'm, I'm nowhere near having a whole and healthy brain. And I'd like to... Um, I just, I don't know where to go from here. So if you want to join me on a journey of uh, trying to figure out my brain, <laughs> you're welcome to, welcome to the channel. Welcome to the fun. Anyways, right, Bunny? Turn you around. Cappuccino. Bunny. Are you a good boy? is a good bunny thank you in advance for not being judgmental um if you're new here i'm not always like this <laughs> we also have fun on this channel but uh feel free to subscribe and hit the notification bell and also i know that there's a lot of you guys that watch but you don't subscribe so if you can and want to subscribe <laughs> you should because it helps my channel out a lot if you want to share this content then do and if you're not new here then welcome back i appreciate you and i will see you guys in a vlog very soon